Welcome back to Leighton's Auto. Okay, so these are going to be the things that you're going to need. Well, these are the fasteners that I use for uh, fastening the wires to the post. I use a drill bit to put them in. It's just easier if you pre-drill it. It's not so hard. Uh, wire cutters, obviously. Uh, that's a post that I'm going to be putting in. All the fencing I'm doing today is just temporary, so I can show you guys exactly how this works. A pair of pliers, sledgehammer to put the post in, uh, grounding rod, which is very important, uh, hammer, uh, fence charger, fence wire, uh, some nails, little hatchet. All of those things is what I use when I'm doing fencing. I'm always doing fencing. <laughs> uh, so today I'm just going to do this little section for you guys so you can actually see exactly how I do my fencing for a Great Pyrenees dog. Uh, I put out a, a video about three years ago uh, about doing electric fencing for uh, Great Pyrenees. Uh, it was the first video I ever posted to YouTube. I really didn't do, uh, I didn't actually show you how to do it, I just kind of explained it and it might have been a little bit confusing now that I go back and look at it. Uh, so today, I'm actually going to show you guys exactly what you need and actually how to do it. Logie, you can't sit on me, you big monster. Get out of the way. <laughs> this is Logan, my big male. He's a big fat soul is what he is. Okay, uh, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a uh, wooden stake in. I guess I'm going to adjust it up a little bit. So what I'm doing, this is just temporary today. This, this fence will not be staying here. This is just so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So there's already one fence in or a post I should say. This post is there. I'm just going to put another one like right here just as a temporary thing. I'm not going to pound it down far because uh, I want to be able to pull it back out. So the thing is, is with a, a Great Pyrenees is uh, you have to have extra ground lines. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe I should explain this part first. I'm just going to cover up the name of the charger because I, I don't suggest this charger for anybody. This is just an old one that I have kicking around. Now, on the bottom of the charger, you'll see a green knob and a red knob. The green is ground. The red is positive. Now, it, I guess the, the simplest way to explain that for somebody who don't know, uh, if you look at an outlet in your house, there's, there's uh, well, three holes. One is a, a ground, and the, the other one's a positive, and then a neutral. But this works like the positive and the neutral. So the positive is going to be the red, which is actually the wire that runs along the post. The ground, or the neutral, is actually going to be the ground. That's why we have to put in a ground rod. But now for the Great Pyrenees, I go one step beyond that. I always run an extra ground line along with my hot line, which is the positive line. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that in a few minutes. So first thing we're going to do, now this is all just temporary fencing, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up about a foot. I'm going to put the nail in at a foot on each side. Now this is my wire. So what I'm going to do with this one, this is actually going to go, I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. So I'm just going to wrap my wire around that nail because it is a ground line. It doesn't need to be insulated. It needs to be grounded. Now this is my ground post. 
right here. You can actually buy the proper fittings for these guys and you just, it, what it is, is it's a, a clamp that goes over and it's got a bolt and you run your wire down and you clamp it together. I don't have one unfortunately for today and I wasn't going to drive an hour to go get one. So, I'll make sure you guys can see me from over there. You take your ground rod. Now, normally you pound this thing all the way into the ground as far down as you can. But I'm just doing this to give you guys an idea of what it needs. So this is an actual ground, a neutral. The reason I keep it up about a foot is because Great Pyrenees are smart dogs and what they'll do is they'll try to go underneath so I kind of outsmarted them a little bit now these are my connectors that I run my hot wires through are these guys now there's many many different options out there for that but for me then
Okay. I'm just going to run these wires through here. I'm not going to cut this uh, uh, wire off because, uh, I, like I said, this is just to show you guys how it actually works. And I'm going to be uh, <laughs> tearing it all down as soon as I get the video finished. But I just wanted to show you guys exactly how this works. Just in case you don't know. This out of the way. Oops. I'm trying to keep it fairly snug so it uh, looks right for you guys. Uh. Doing things on a temporary basis just to show somebody is... is usually I spend a bit of time, all these would have to be pulled tight together. Uh, you know, there'd be no looseness in any of these wires. They would all be tight. But I find this is the best fencing for Great Pyrenees. Okay, so this is the fence. Like, none of it's pulled tight because, uh, like I said, this is just a temporary fence. If I pull too hard, I'm going to pull that temporary post right out of the ground. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come into this way a little bit more. What we got here is our ground. This is the ground. This is a ground line. This is a hot line. All the hot lines go to the red connector on your charger. All of the ground lines go to your ground on the charger. Now the reason I run the extra ground and I just don't ground it to the ground is so that I make sure because if the, the, the area you're in is really dry uh, then sometimes the ground rods don't work real well so I always uh, uh, beat that problem by just running an extra ground line all the way through my fencing because this is a hot line, hot line, hot line, a ground line and another hot line now you can go as high as you like like this, I'm just showing you this. This is how it works the best. You can actually go up one more hotline if you like and make it go up to about four feet or so, which is fine. Because you have to understand, once the dogs learn about the fence, they won't go close to this thing. Like my dogs won't touch this fence ever. I could leave this little section here. My dogs would never even come close to it. They would always stay back two feet, three feet away from it. It's because they know that, you know, if you touch it, it's going to hurt. So they don't touch it. And for me, that little bit of pain, like it doesn't hurt that bad. I've been zapped with electric fence <laughs> hundreds of times. I mean, it wakes you up, but it won't kill you. And it's not that painful. It only lasts for a second or less. So that's why I use this for my dogs. Because I, I cover quite a huge area. I say I have at least... 10 acres uh, fence this way for the dogs and I do the exact same way for the pigs the pigs are done the exact same way I always run an extra ground and uh, uh, four hot lines for them and that works seems to work okay I was having a little bit of trouble down there because I only ran uh, one ground and one hot line when the pigs are big which is fine but when you got wieners you have to run a few extra uh, lines for them so but yeah that's basically how it works so this is a hot line a ground line a hot line a hot line a hot line all the hot lines go to the red connector all the ground lines and go to the ground rod and then the ground rod gets wired to the green connector on the charger now you cannot let the ground line 
touch the hot rod. If you, that happens, you're going to ground your fence out and it won't work. So you, you've got to be careful. That's one of the most important things. You cannot have your ground line touching your hot line anywhere. The hot line is the positive line. And the ground line is the negative line. So that's basically it. It's a pretty simple fence to do. Uh, it's probably one of the cheaper ways to do it and uh, because if I had to do 10 acres in like say wooden fence or page wire or you know uh, any other type of fencing it probably would have cost me 10 or 15 thousand dollars to do it. I probably did the 10 acres for probably a hundred or two hundred dollars in uh, wire and probably I think I bought like a fairly big charger for my property because it keeps the horses, pigs, dogs, everybody in. Uh, I paid uh, 450 bucks for mine, and it's a 60 mile charger. It's it's a big one. But if you're only doing one or two acres, you don't need a charger that size. No, we're even close to that size. So you can probably find a charger for probably 150 bucks, and that's Canadian. So if you're in the U.S., it's a lot cheaper. So yeah, yeah. I hope this helped you out with uh, some of the questions about using a uh, electric fence for your Great Pyrenees. Uh, the fencing will work for pretty much any livestock. Uh, this is the one that I swear by. Uh, it's better than any page wire or anything else because uh, if a dog don't respect your fence, he'll either dig under it, climb over it, or jump over it. But electric fence, once a dog touches it a couple of times, you won't touch it again, you won't go next to it. Uh, this thing even works when my girl is in heat, and my big male still won't cross the fence, and my female won't go across the fence to him. So that says something, that's uh, pretty good fencing. <laughs> Alright, so, if you like the video, maybe consider subscribing. Hit that like button, leave a comment and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.